and I'm standing next to Eric Lawholm. He is sales strategist, expert, guru, and also a speaker here at CEO Space in Henderson, Nevada. How are you doing, Eric? I'm doing great. Well, first of all, tell, tell me a little more about your expertise. What do you do? Uh, I help people increase their sales results. So I focus on sales systems, sales scripting, sales strategy. Anybody that needs to increase their sales results, I can help them. Well, this is a perfect forum for that here at, at CEO Space, and we attended your session last night. It was incredible. And before we get into like the sales talk, I really want to touch base on your story because I was getting really teary-eyed, and I could relate to your story on you having a dream. And first of all, tell me about how you started, and then the story how it unfolded. I got started in sales um, a little over 18 years ago. And I went to work for a multi-millionaire real estate investor, kind of like the show The Apprentice with Donald Trump. And when I got there, I was there to learn real estate. And when he told me, Eric, you're going to do a sales job. I said, really, sales? I've never done sales before. Maria, I was terrible at it. I was the bottom producer <laughs> on this team of 15 people. It got so bad. At the end of my first year, they wrote me up, put me on quota probation. And so I had to figure out how to sell, and I met a guy named Dr. Donald Moyne, and he became my mentor. He's a brilliant sales strategist, and he taught me his sales systems, and eventually I became the top producer in that company. So that's how I got my start in selling. Okay, so during that time, though, when you were like at the bottom and you were trying to make the quota, tell me about what's happened in, in terms of you starting to get success and then, of course, losing success. Well, once I got trained by Dr. Moyne, I affectionately call him the Obi-Wan Kenobi of sales training, <laughs> if you remember Obi-Wan from Star Wars. And I was like a young Luke Skywalker. And I started achieving excellence in sales, and it really built my confidence. So I went out and I started my first company, and I thought, well, I'm really good at sales now with Dr. Moyne's help. Now I'll be really strong in business. And I didn't know anything about HR, training, cash flow, hiring. And I started a telemarketing company back in 1995. And back then, you might remember this, we used to pay per minute when we made phone calls. Mm. Now you pay like $40 to get unlimited phone calling. Yeah. So I had five full-time phone reps working for me, quarter a minute, and we rang up a $5,000 phone bill, if you can imagine that. And I couldn't pay the bill, we ran out of money. And so when you're in the telemarketing business and you can't pay your phone bill, oh, God. as you can imagine, we went out of business. And what happened to me is I felt like, because the business failed, I took on that identity and I felt like I was a failure. So I collapsed, my business failed and then it was me over here and I collapsed those two and felt like I was a failure which then caused me to start acting like I was a failure and it really impacted my marriage to the point where my wife and I ended up separating. As I shared in the seminar last night, my wife went to live with my mom and it was kind of like, mom, <laughs> whose side are you on, right? And she said, I'm on both of your sides and my mom was right. So now my mom's, my wife's living with my mother and I was out of money. I had to shut the company down. I didn't have a job. And I unfortunately ended up being homeless. I was sleep, literally sleeping in my car. And a friend of mine met me one day and I don't know how he came across me because I didn't have a cell phone and we just connected one day and he asked me, he said, Eric, where, where have you been living? And when you're living in your car, that's a really challenging question to have to answer and honestly I was embarrassed by it I didn't know if I should say well I'm staying with a friend of mine or I'm in a hotel and I was just I didn't know what to say and I just paused and I eventually told him I said David I've been I've been sleeping in my car and he offered to open up his home to me and so I ended up going to live with David and it was just so great because I was at a time in my life when I really needed a hand up you know, and sometimes life's that way, especially with all that's going on in the economy right now. And I needed a hand up and, and thank God my pride didn't get in the way. And I accepted the invitation. I started living in his home and then my car got repossessed because I was behind on my bills. Oh God. And I always, I'm a big person around visualization and I always had visualized for whatever reason, it's kind of weird, but I always visualized that I was going to become a waiter one day. And so I thought, well, this is my time that I'm supposed to be a waiter. So I ended up applying for waiter jobs in uh, downtown Reno, Nevada at the casinos. The entry level waiter positions there, it's a graveyard shift. So you're working 11 to seven o'clock in the morning. I could not get a job waiting tables on a graveyard shift. They said I didn't have enough experience. <laughs> so Harris turned me down, the Harris Casino. I was trying to get a job as a waiter in the coffee shop. And they called me back a week later. 
and they must have really liked me in the interview, something about the interview. They said, look, we know we turned you down, but you know, we liked you in the interview. We're going to give you another shot. And so I got hired to wait tables, graveyard shift, 11 o'clock at night till seven in the morning, earning basically a dollar per table in tips. And I called my wife, who of course is living at my mom's, as I mentioned. I said, now I begged her back. I said, you know, will you please come back? And she said, well, where do you live right now? I said, well, I'm living with my friend David and his kids and his wife. She goes, well, how exactly <laughs> would that work, right? Yeah. I said, that's a good point. And it took me another six weeks earning a dollar a tip on average per table to save up the money to get a one bedroom apartment. And so I saved up the money. And I look back on that moment, one of the happiest moments of my life, getting this simple one bedroom apartment and we were back together again. And I shared that story with this group of entrepreneurs last night because so many people are, they're in a place in their life right now because of the economy and they're, they're going, how did I end up here? Yeah. You know, I, I lost my uh, retirement because of the stock market or I lost my home, I had to short sell my home or I went through a foreclosure or maybe they had to shut a business down. And they may have been in that place where I was where they had these circumstances happen and they collapse their circumstances with who they are and start and they're viewing themselves as a failure. And so I shared that story last night to inspire people, to remind them that you're not your foreclosure, you're not your bankruptcy, you're not your divorce if you've gone through a divorce and that you have unique skills and abilities and that you have greatness inside of you. So I shared a message of encouragement and hope last night and I think it did connect with a lot of people. Well, thank you so much, Eric, for sharing your story and exactly what you said. No matter what's going on in your life, and if you've lost your home, if you've lost your business, that is not who you are. And So what success advice do you have in closing for somebody who is going through that and who wants to overcome their own adversity? What do you want to say to them? Well, I think the last thing to say is simply this. A great metaphor that I learned from Jim Rohn mm -hmm. is life is like the seasons. Mm -hmm. And when we're in struggle, it's like winter. And when everything's going great, it's like we're in summer. And it's just a season and the season will pass. And that helps me when I have challenging times, even to this day in my life, just to remind myself, it's just a season, it's winter, and it will pass. Thank you so much. Continued success to you. Thanks. All right, everybody get ready to get a piece of paper out and a pen and write this down. I'm here with Eric Lofholm. He is the sales expert and he's going to be giving us the $50,000 idea. $50,000 idea, so get ready. So implement this one idea, and I believe it can put an extra $50,000 in your pocket, no exaggeration. I've used this idea over and over and over again, and it is like money in the bank. So here's the strategy. We've all had that time when we're following up with somebody. We've delivered a presentation, and they said, I'm really interested in doing business with you, but I just can't make the decision today. Can you follow up with me Tuesday at 4 o'clock? So it's one of those, and you call them Tuesday at 4, and you get their voicemail. And you say, look, it's Eric here, and I'm sure you're there waiting for my call. Uh, here's my, my cell phone number. Here's my office number. Um, here's my wife's office number. Here's my son's cell phone. Here's his Twitter. One of those messages, right? And they don't call you back. So now you're in this dilemma. It's like, what should I do? Should I follow up with them or not? And we all have this little voice in the back of our head. It's constantly talking to us at up to five hundred words a minute and you're having this conversation with yourself a couple of days after you made that initial voicemail message and you're saying should I call them back yeah. or not right you know they know how to get a hold of you it's one of those situations and so you muster up the courage and you call them again and then you leave another message and they don't call you back so now you're really in this dilemma what should I do so here's the fifty thousand dollar idea you follow up, follow up, follow up until they buy or die. You take the sale to a conclusion of a yes or no with one caveat. If the opportunity is big enough, okay. because we don't have time to chase down every lead, but if it's a big opportunity, take the sale to a conclusion of a yes or no. And a funny story to illustrate the importance of follow up is a story that I've told many, many times in my seminars about the famous movie star and actress, Denise Richards. And years ago, I was at the grocery store, and you could just imagine you're waiting in line, to, they're gonna scan your groceries, and they have the tabloids there. And so there's a Cosmopolitan magazine, and I see this Cosmopolitan magazine, and Denise Richards is on the cover, and you know she's stunning, and so I thought I'd pick up the magazine and read it for the articles, of course. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so I'm reading this article about Denise Richards, and she's talking about her relationship with Charlie Sheen, and at one point she was married to Charlie Sheen, and she was talking about how when she first met him, and 
that she felt like there was this attraction, that he was attracted to her, but he wouldn't call her back. And so what she said in the article is, um, I left it up to him to call me. Well, not exactly. I followed up by calling him first. And so the point of the story is, if the beautiful actress and model Denise Richards has to follow up, we have to follow up. So it's a really funny story. That's the $50,000 idea. And although we're joking about it, if you actually put that into action, I believe it can put an extra $50,000 in your pocket. Right on. Thank you so much for sharing. Fabulous tip. And I guess I better get back on the phone and start calling people. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. You're welcome.